Okay, now we're recording. All right, so we're here with um, Carrie, and he's got a really interesting idea that we've been talking about for years and years, and it's called um, Porpoise. And basically it is a, um, uh, he calls it a seismic, volcanic, atmospheric prediction system. And so what he does is he um, looks at the positions of the planets in our solar system relative to each other. And he um, is able to uh, make predictions about uh, whether earthquakes uh, have a higher potential of, of happening or not. And so um, I'm going to ask Carrie to explain this to us uh, um, further. And because I think it's really interesting and I know that my YouTube subscribers are also gonna find it really interesting. So Carrie, if you could please explain to us your porpoise system. First of all, I think we all wanna know what porpoise means. So if you can um, explain to us what, the, uh, what those letters mean and then describe to us what your system is and, and why you think it works. Um, that I'd really appreciate that, thanks. Well, thank you, Lori, or Flack Fractal Woman, for allowing me to do this interview with you, or you interviewing me. Um, porpoise, if you can see right up here, beyond this side, you can see my hand right there in the red. What it stands for is planetary, orbital, and rotational position interaction schedule. It means, what that means is wherever the planets are as they go around the sun, their positions change in, in comparison with each other and which side of the sun they're on and where they're at under the constellations and in the galaxy. But that's, depending on where their positions are, they make certain connections and interactions and disconnections that cause electrical surges and uh, just electrical pulls and pushes that all the planets feel no matter which ones are connecting. It's like a big circuit that if one feels an electrical surge or jolt, the entire circuit does, which means all the planets, including the sun, feel these electrical uh, changes, I'll call them. They're not all shorts, they're not all surges, and they're not all uh, disconnections, it just depends. They happen continually, they happen constantly, but there are different values and intensities, and a lot of them are because of the frequency at which this electrical surge happens. Even electric currents are at frequencies. They all have different frequencies, which could be your hertz. So that's that part of what it is and how it works is more I would go to a different screen to kind of give you an idea. Right, let me see if I can pull it up here. My computer's... So you're basically supporting the electric universe. Um, oh uh, yeah, purposes, right? Obviously, yeah. Exactly, one hundred and ten percent. It's electric. Uh, I guess you can see my screen of the planets. Yeah. What are you? You can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. If you see, this is uh, today's date, and we had a pretty big quake. Uh, I think it was yesterday, or the first. Mm -hmm over in the Philippines. And I'll just show you why this works the way it does. The reason that hit is because you've got Mars, Mercury, and Jupiter in a line. And they've been in a line for almost two or three weeks. That's where all these other quakes There's are There's been from. a lot of activity lately, yeah. Right? And all, all the volcanic activity is because yeah. these three in planets Iceland, yeah. mm -hmm. are staying in line. And I'll show you here with a quick let it play. I'm going to let the planets orbit backwards to show you from December 1st, I'm going to go back and watch Mercury, Mars, and Jupiter kind of stay in line. Let me pause here. And yep. when I turn the screen, you see they, from November 9th, I'll go forward now, you'll see how they, I turn my screen, they kind of got in a partial line, and they don't have to be perfectly in a straight arrow line. You know, they can be partially coming into line, and the more more alignment they get, the more intense the connections or disconnections become. So let me let it run here. You see December 3rd, we're a little past, perfectly lined up. We're back about right. November 28th was pretty well perfectly lined up, if you see that. So did something happen on November 28th? I think there was some 
smaller earthquakes and yeah. a lot of volcanic activity. Okay. And so I know for sure a, Iceland has been um, very right. active. There's yeah. a lot of other quakes in, in Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, even Hawaii's quakes is acting up. But see, you've got this kicker planet back here, Uranus, and it's a big planet and it has a lot of pool because it's way larger than any of the inner four. And as this scenario comes around, you're going to see more activity like there. See how these three are in line now? Yeah. So December 4th, tomorrow, we'll probably see another decent quake. But what happens is, even on today, the 3rd, let me get it to the 3rd again. December 3rd, you've got kind of a Y here. See that mm. Y? Yep. Between Mercury and Uranus and Mercury and Jupiter, and of course Mars here, It'll, sometimes it'll pull in right between these two when they both connect at the same time to, for the lineup. And that's every, if you go back to every quake we've ever had, you will see that the planets will line up in a, in a, in a lineup, three or more for every major quake. If you go back to Wikipedia and look back through all the major quakes through, throughout history, yeah. You will see where the planets line up like that. That's right. what, I say that's what causes earthquakes. That's what instigates them and what creates them. Okay. That's really interesting. It's um, an electrical interchange between the whole system. Now, we don't know what's happening on all the other planets when we have an earthquake. Sure. We, They're going to experience some kind of electrical okay. interchange. Can, can we see earthquakes on Mars? I don't, they've detected them. They've it's detected far... them with the rovers. <laughs> yeah. But they don't really see a lot of movement. Right. I yeah, that. I guess, yeah. I but, guess maybe the rover yeah. on Mars might feel an earthquake, possibly. I, it can feel some and they detect movement on the vibration. Right. I don't know if it moves the rocks or what have you. I, right. I right. don't see where they show that. Right. They just and it's say, really, they're just taking snapshots and they're not really... Yeah, I wonder if they have any sensors on that to detect earthquakes on. I just know they have the, the movement sensors. Right. If they detect right. that the, yeah. the rover's moving when they're not moving it, they know something's happening. Okay. So and it could be all planets may not experience earthquakes. They may right. just have like Mars gets these huge dust storms. Yeah. But they're usually at a certain time of the year every year. But there's so other those things. Those could be that, electrical too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even the dirt devils and a lot of tornadoes on Earth have a lot to do with electrical uh, in, induction and conduction. Right. They know that. Okay. So how did you um, how did you discover this? How did you come up with this idea? I just uh, well, one day I was thinking, what if? Because I believe that the planets uh, orbiting mainly Jupiter and Saturn are, have a lot to do with the solar cycle. That's what started all this. Right. I'm 100% sure that a lot of the activity on the surface of the sun is because of the <laughs> connection from the sun to Jupiter and uh, Saturn mainly, their electrical and magnetic connections to the sun as they orbit and cross each other's paths, as it were, according to the sun, yeah. that causes a lot of magnetic swirling, electrical swirling on the surface of the sun. That's why you see uh, solar activity is so the solar, I think I remember you talking a while back about uh connecting the orbits of the planets of those two planets in particular with the solar cycle that right. matches up quite nicely so you're saying that the planets at the solar that the sun itself isn't solely responsible for the solar cycle not for the solar cycle it's right. the yeah the sun is responsible for the orbit of the planets but the planets are in turn responsible for a lot of the actions and solar activities right. from, from, you know, uh, holes, sunspots, flares, a lot of the, the prominences, all that is due to the planets. The sun's not, the sun would be an even burning thing like it is uh, at the minimum solar cycle. I see. Without the planets, the sun would be kind of boring. Right. It would just... <laughs> stay as its normal self. But as the yeah. orbit, the planet's orbit, it, it causes the sun to have surface activity. I see. That's and really- It's also uh, the, the orbital year, it takes exactly 11 years for uh, Jupiter's orbit to catch Saturn. And that is the year, one half cycle of, or 
takes 22 years for Jupiter to catch Saturn. And that okay, exactly so that's half a of that year cycle. Yeah. Right. And exactly half of that when they're opposite each other is 11 years. So it, it just tells you that, that when the Jupiter and Saturn are exactly opposite sides of the sun is half the solar cycle. And when Jupiter and Saturn are real close to each other, that's the other half. But it doesn't always wow. happen at that exact time. It happens when they're at like three quarters and three quarters. Okay. It's it's a it's a it takes time for this all to catch up. If you know what I mean, it doesn't right. happen instantly for the, the activity on the sun has to ramp up to catch up as the magnetic and electrical connections kind of stretch and bind. Right. As they go around, they wrap their electrical and magnetic connections around the sun and it doesn't go straight to them all the time. I see. It gets wound up like a spring, if you will. Okay. Now, interestingly, there was a solar mass ejection a few days ago that was supposed yeah. to hit. Um, I don't know, yesterday or the day before the or something like that. Yeah, and that does seem to kind of line up with your things that are lining up there, which is right. There's a massive lot of uh, auroras. They've already got pics up on Twitter and, and yeah. Facebook with people recording them yesterday and last night. Right. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's it's a lot to do. And if if I could show you again here, just a moment. Yeah. The uh, The alignment of the major, let me back way out here. If you notice, the alignment of the four large main outer planets, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn, they're all on one side of the sun. I see. see. Oh, them. yeah. yeah. So, so as, as the, the solar system as a connected circuit, they're really pulling everything that way or to their side, if you see there. I see, yeah. Everything's pulling towards us from the yeah. sun, these huge planets out here. So that affects affects us in here. So I'm not sure exactly how that'll work, but either when we get over here and our went deeper into the well, probably closer to summer, because we're in December now. Let me go forward with this just to show you. March, April, around March, we should be about opposite all four of them. If you see that, okay. you see how we're on the opposite side of the sun. Yeah. Here's the two over here and the two over here. I don't know what kind of weather we're going to get when this happens. You can look back in history, but there's, if you have to go back to this situation again, it's almost 160 years ago. And they didn't have real great weather reports <laughs> <laughs> 160 years ago. So I don't know, you know, they'll, they'll say it was a mild this and mild that. But another thing I want to, let me throw this up here while I'm thinking about it. So I don't forget to throw this out there just for future reference. Okay. My prediction, uh, December 5th, that's 2022. Oops. Now let me do this a different way. Sometimes it jumps ahead on me real quick. Let me get that. What is the third? Okay, now we're back to today. What I predict on December 9th, let me just go to it. Right here, you're going to see Venus, Earth, and Jupiter line straight up. Yeah. I predict that between December 7th and the 10th, there's going to be a pretty good sized quake somewhere. Now. Okay. I can tell you that that's basically when it's going to happen within them three or four days. Okay. What I can also tell you is that if you look at the Earth, right, the face of the Earth towards the sun is noon. It's 12 o'clock noon. And if you look to the side, on this side of the ring where the, where the orbit shows going in and out, that would be 9 o'clock or 6 o'clock at night. And over here is 6 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And midnight is on the back side of the Earth. Okay. Right back that way. So the earthquake is going to happen more than likely towards the biggest planet. Now I'm going to say about 10 o'clock at night. Between 6 o'clock six here and right midnight that. over here. I say about 10 o'clock at night between December 8th, 9th, 7th, 8th, or 9th. There's going to be a decent sized quake and it's going to happen about 10 o'clock at night but I cannot tell you where on the planet that's going okay. to happen. 
because the okay. planet, as watch here, as the planet rotates, see that? I yeah. don't know where it's going to be in position during the day of the 10th, where exactly it's, when it's going to happen yeah. as the Earth rotates. Right. So it's a very general, general thing. You can't be specific about it, but it's still really interesting. Now, you at one point had a, you gave me a website where you were sort of posting your predictions. Do you still have that or? No, I quit that because there was no interest in it, no hits. I didn't push it. Well, there uh, might be interest in it now with that, you know, my my right. people might be interested in it. <laughs> I hear that. So I'll try and find a place to yeah. put it up again. And, I, and Yeah, like I'm trying to think maybe on your um, community section in your YouTube channel. And that I would can, then then that would bring people to your YouTube channel. Well, I can do that. I'll yeah. try and uh, okay. put it up there, post yeah. Uh, what I see, but it's like it's, every, you know, when you see something that you seem obvious, you know, like the big connections and, you know, like you can guess pretty, pretty well. I mean, you've gone back in, in, in time and looked at all the big earthquakes and you've seen these alignments. Now, what would be really interesting, and this is something that, you know, I wanted to try and help you with, but I'm very busy with my full time job and my own, you know, YouTube channel and all right. the other sort of projects that I have going. I think it would be, I think the best way like for you to formalize your prediction system to make a real prediction system, I think um, machine learning would be a really great tool now that machine learning is, is very popular uh, and big. And so my idea was, and this is something I don't um, have any expertise in machine learning, in machine learning, but if someone, if you could sort of make a list of all the times in history where there are big earthquakes and what the alignments of the planets were, if someone could kind of take that, take the positions of the planets relative to the sun and the earth somehow, I'm not sure how, maybe using Stellarium or maybe using the, whatever systems you're using and then apply AI to it, um, then you might be able to make better predictions in the future, like more automatically. You know what I, I mean? That, so that would, that would I really, help. so I'm going to ask my team, my YouTube channel team, because I've now I have almost, you know, I've more than 9,000 subscribers. Surely one of them has expertise in machine learning. If, um, you know, we could try to find someone for you that could maybe help you figure out how to apply machine learning to this. It seems to me like, because we do machine learning in, in my, um, the lab that I work in for, like medical imaging for image, you know, so we feed in a bunch of images of maybe um, a prostate segmentation or something like a medical image. Uh, and then the machine learning will be able to automatically segment the prostate. And so this to me um, seems kind of an obvious um, application for machine learning to um, help you try to make an automated system. I think that would be really cool. So I'm putting that up out there right now to my my call them my team to see if there's someone out there that might be able to help you. And then they can get in touch with you through your uh, YouTube channel, which I will link in the description. Yeah, uh, link Porpoise yeah. and uh, yeah, the good Porpoise vibrations and code. the Good Vibration. So Carrie also has another channel, Good Vibrations, which I may have um, shown you guys in the past, but I will make sure I leave a link to that too, because he does it a lot of really cool experiments with high voltage electricity, which I'm really afraid of. And, um, <laughs> and with magnetism and magnets and, you know, really cool stuff. So I want, you know, I want to make sure that, um, that my people can see your other work too, which is related. Obviously you're talking about electric universe, you're talking about voltage, you're talking mm -hmm. about, uh, current, you're talking about induction, you're talking about, you know, all the, electrical things that happen in electrical circuits also are happening in the solar system, which I find really interesting. So sure. um, now we, in, in terms of this meeting, because I don't have the official um, Zoom link uh, or Zoom, you know, I'm not paying $20 a month for Zoom. Uh, our meeting's gonna run out in about 10 minutes. So I don't know if you wanna, if you think this is enough for the first one or we can continue on to the, the second meeting. Um, I think this kind of gives an eye, a general idea of yeah. how it works. There's not okay. a whole lot more I can do except show you, yeah. you know, the exact earthquakes and the exact positions of the planets. Yeah. And anybody can do this themselves. Okay. Sure. My, my point with this, 
is hopefully someone will take it seriously seriously enough to help me save some lives. That would, yeah, if we could know when the really big earthquakes, people could me either at least mentally prepare or um, I don't you know. know, like, I don't know because earthquakes happen because you can't tell where on earth is going to happen. It's, it's very difficult to know how to prepare people. Right. But I think if people sort of mentally knew, okay, an earthquake might happen. My yeah. area is prone to earthquakes. Therefore, maybe I should keep in mind where our safe place yeah. is. Maybe tell the kids, okay, if an earthquake happens, we're going here. That sort Next, of thing, right? And I they think will that know within be, three if days. It doesn't happen, that, no harm, no foul. But if it does happen, then you're at least right. Safe. If they could be alerted for the three days that I predict for it or is predicted to hit around the globe. And yeah. there is one thing I, you know, it's the same thing that the activity on the sun always happens from 50 degrees of south or north down to the equator, never above. And okay. if you look at the earthquakes on the earth, they always happen about 50 degrees towards the earthquake. Yeah. Towards the equator. So it's always in that area that all this activity, right. electrical exchange happens. And that's where the people would have to be concerned is in their yeah. earthquake zones. Exactly. But, yeah. You know, just to know it might be coming. Yeah. It could save some lives. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Just to, you know, you can't stop it, but you can maybe have, you know, a safe place that you could go to if you feel an earthquake right. happening or instantly, go to your safe place or whatever. Yeah. I think that would be really useful. And yeah. I think maybe with the AI, we might be able to pin it down well, even I further. Think I think the, if with this is historical information, like this is the perfect, like when I retire and nobody else has offered to help you with this, I may learn AI or, or <laughs> just, you know, through my work, because there are other people working on it, you know, I can kind of well, get maybe more information on, on how it works. I, I'm just too, it's, it's a big um, learning curve. The AI stuff is a big right. learning curve and I don't really have time to do it right now, unfortunately, but I'm, I'm very interested in that someday I would like to, uh, get in more into it and but I'm sure there's someone out there that's super savvy some kid who well, you know <laughs> well, let me mention something, something else here that's that's beyond the AI of uh, computer predictions is I'm sure there's a way to make an antenna receiving frequency oh uh, tuner that could tell when this ramp up starts yeah, it will start and think... a couple of days before and there's I don't know how to Make something um, to detect that big. Are you level. familiar with Eric Dollard? Yeah. Eric, oh, yeah. I've talked to him. He's, he, oh, good. Yeah. Because he was doing something like that. He had an earthquake prediction system as well. Right. But I, for him to believe the way I'm saying it happens, he's he's sticking more to what he knows how it yeah. works. Yeah, exactly. Not an electric that, universe, but how electricity works. And yeah. I'm looking at more of a phantom mode currents. To gravity to magnetism is what's yeah. ramping up. Right. And there, there is a way to detect it. We just haven't figured out yeah. how to detect that large right. of a frequency. It's so big, it encompasses the entire solar system. Until yeah. It's so, in. like a low frequency, large wavelength, probably, right? Possibly. I'm not sure what yeah. would be best to detect it. I have yeah. no, that's where yeah. I need help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. For, for an actual detection system. That would be, um, yeah, somewhere between what you're doing and what Eric Dollar's doing. Exactly. Probably, yeah. Uh, that would be wonderful, yeah. And maybe he'll touch in on something we're doing here and it, yeah. it, might, it might ping something in him to, to look into it. Cool. Okay. So uh, I think this is probably good enough for our first meeting. I think we'll talk again about this. We'll see what happens between the 7th and the 10th, and then maybe we'll sort of talk again after that and, and That'd see. That'd be great. That. Yeah. And I, you know, I may be wrong, but from the size of the three planets involved, Venus, Earth, and uh, Jupiter, I'm sure something's going to happen around the ninth. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. The ninth. Uh, yeah. I thank you, Lori. Okay. All right. We will, I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay. So.